father General Peter Hans Kolmenbach established the Jesuit province of Hazaribagh from 22nd April 1992 with father Edward Mudvasari as the first provincial at that time the province numbered 119 members 65 priests 9 brothers 30 scholastics and 15 novices in the letter establishing the hazaribagh province father kolunbach pointed out that since 1956 when hazaribagh was a region of ranchi province had grown in numbers and apostolic works the australian province sustained and supported azaribagh to build up its institutions especially parishes educational institutions socio pastoral centers and research centers creative initiatives were taken to do research in primary education in culturation and dialogue we were all set to start the new province there was great expectations and enthusiasm among the hazari bag jesuits at this juncture my primary concern was to get to know the province and its works its men and their vision and their future plans so i started a visitation of the province and at the end of which two things were clear to me the province needed to consolidate the existing uh, works and improve the infrastructure secondly the province needed to reach out to the new areas which were unexplored in this process we identified several places among the dalit works sandal works and also new areas like among the korovas Edward moved the province offices from St Xavier's campus to Loyola Center our house for candidates the army for some years had been conducting occasional field firing exercises on the hills above the chachari but in 1993 news came that this would be extended to the chachari itself resulting in people being forced to periodically move from their lands and houses In Mahwada an action committee was formed to resist strongly the proposal of the government the cry was raised and emblazoned on many a village home wall we will give up our lives if need be but our lands never when these peoples movement started i was in mahwadar hostel as superintendent what uh, i could uh, see that time was it was very much motivated by late father sabri he motivated all the people and i was so much uh, excited to see such a large crowd and block the two roads and uh, from all corners with chachari and barwe and dungla side all these things so people were really motivated and they thought that threat their life was threatened because the land and houses will be taken away by the army so their identity was also threatened so they may be nowhere and lot of motivations uh, seminars and activities took place that time even the muslims and hindus and tribals all were united and they were also going for dharna so dharna was not only one or two days it was maybe one week or something like that and people were there they put up the tents according to the village wise and in the village they had already decided that 
all the persons except few should remain at home and everybody should go this kind of uh, movement and people's united was very much uh, uh, exciting to see one person's name worth mentioning in this connection is mr peter minch he was a retired commissioner from jockey poker very much in the center of this place just few you know, and a couple of kilometers from here this tutwapane uh, and he was the one who was giving advice for the administrative purposes sabri was giving legal advice in this movement and there are so many people joined the group and it was very well organized from every community from christian community from muslim community from hindu community those who are up in the affected area so everybody joined and they were having meetings and plannings were done in a group there was no one person so called president it was the central committee who was uh, organizing and uh, guiding the group and that is the success of this movement and that's why till now it is going on and is still alive and is still getting stronger and stronger In 1997 a parish was started in Pakri Pat with Father Xavier Kalko as the first parish priest and not long afterwards a middle school was started run by the sisters of St Joseph of Tarbes It's a very good cooperation I got from villagers and then sisters came there and sisters uh going village village to village and we collected children and that was the starting uh, their uh, school and sister pillow was the superior there so it was a very good experience not but then how we started it was not uh, in the beginning in the water uh, problem there in pakri part from mahwada we got cooperation and uh, they helped us to and always father phil was very very kind to help and still guide me and whatever uh, trouble he, he you know he helped me a lot at about the same time a parish was started at tuntoli with first father jacob almeda and then father suleman minch as the parish priest and the sisters of saint joseph of the apparition who were residing in nearby kapu village began to reside in tuntoli and were running the school when father xavier dravi was appointed to the Bishrampur Parish in June 1993 first as assistant parish priest and in January 1994 as parish priest his attention was drawn to the plight of the Korvas very many illiterate and having lost their lands to other more powerful groups in 1996 Xavier was transferred to start a new parish at Jamunia Tar again a Korwa area Xavier worked might and main for the Korwa people even facing hostile opposition from other groups he set up a school and hostel and by March 1998 there were 500 boys and girls attending the school and 150 students 
in the hostels. Xavier would be very happy looking down from the heaven to see now a flourishing high school with over 1200 students and over 300 in hostels. In 93, Bharat Jibir came to Vishrampur, Paris and from there only he started moving to Korwa villages and from there he got transferred and he came to Jamnyatta in 96 and he saw the situation of the Korwa and Dalit and Bhunyas and slowly he started bringing children to our hostel and our school and at present we have seen that many children they have got government job in different places. Some are in police, some are block, some are teaching here and there. And the parents are happy because they have come to know the value of education. And through education only they can change their mentality, their society life, cultural life, family life. And they are able to move wherever they like. Adrati Janama Lavinu Salvada Lore Kirni Chata Kalamari Jaye Sanakaya Kaye Banaya Eparbu Kaja Mati Saja Banaya Ho Sanakaya Kaye Banaya In nineteen ninety three Father Tony Herbert and Francis Kurian returned from studies in Gujarat and set about making the new acquired residence in Hazaribagh, a resource center for the Dalit apostolate. Francis became the superior of the Prerna community and Tony, director of the documentation center and coordinator of the satsang ministry. Francis and Tony conducted a number of training courses for sisters and others and several awareness community bonding camps for village representative to further the mission for the Dalits. Patra was made the center with the Clarist sisters running a health center, eventually a Grihni too, and moving from village to village, providing health care and organizing self-reliance group. A Jesuit residence was then set up. There were 11 regular day schools and 12 non-formal night schools. Christopher Kerketa, A.T. Thomas and later George Thomas and M.K. Joes were involved in this outreach to the Dalits. A.T. Thomas working against the injustices on the Dalits by high caste people took up the Dalits cause in a land case and some high caste people were jailed for a time. But when by chance A.T. visited Sirka in October 1997, he found armed men beating up a villager. They recognized him as the person who had got them jailed, took him to the nearby forest and killed him. Since then, every year, the fight by AT for the Dalits is remembered in a big celebration, celebrated in Babupara and a mass at the place of the murder of AT. This celebration is not uh, 
a just celebration but a great memory of a great person for the 80th Thomas. And when we talk about 80, still today, whenever we celebrate, uh, it energizes them. Uh, therefore, they, when they recite his slogans, uh, like Daromat Mato Huna, people really get in their energy and they really feel that 80 is present. It is in between Sirka and Chichi, that is in jungle, where we have on 24th of October, that is um, a, celebra a celebration, the mass celebration. And uh, there, not everybody, but those who like, they come. And in big number, around three to 500 people, they come there. And we celebrate mass every year on 24th, 24th of October uh, in Chichi jungle. And it is really bringing people and giving a message that the AT has stood for the poor and the Dalits and the neglected people. In January 1994, Father Edward blessed the new school building at Chari and in March 1995 was celebrated the Silver Jubilee of the first baptism of the parish of 16 Santhal families of Chenaro village not far from Charhi. In the Kajarkilo area, Father Hans Hendricks, Daniel Besra, Clarist sisters and catechists were establishing the faith among the Santhals and eventually a school was built run by the Clarists. Meanwhile, again among the Santhals, the CMC sisters in 1998 began a small school in Patki. Small beginnings which would lead to amazing expansion into high schools. The huge parish area of Burkunda was lightened in January 1995 when the eastern portion was cut off and a new parish of Ramgarh established with diocesan priest Father Isaac Damien as the first parish priest. In July 1994, three CIC sisters began to reside in Patratu and in January 1995 opened a primary school. In January 1997, Catholic Ashram Middle School, Burkunda was upgraded to high school and in April 1997, Father Francis Lopez was appointed the headmaster in place of Father Suleiman Minj. The Bihar government with Chief Minister Lalu Prashad issued a law that to teach in schools there was no need of a teacher's training certificate and the central government decided that further recognition was needed by the National Council for Teacher Education, Father Xavier Tika, taking over as principal in January 1995, faced all these challenges. Primary Teachers Education College was the one and only premier institution in Hazaribagh at that time and therefore we could not lose it at any cost. Bihar Education Code by law had given a mandatory to the minority institutions to have only the trained teachers and that was the reason that we could continue running our institutions. 
In fact, we had fulfilled the terms and conditions of the Bihar government and so we were not derecognized. Whereas many colleges had been derecognized throughout the Bihar state. Another good thing was good news that NCT has invited for affiliation of the colleges. And this gave us much relief and hope for the future survival of our colleges. In February 1997, the PTEC was granted recognition, but for many years, no exams were held. Some other private Christian teacher education colleges therefore closed down, but our PTEC courageously carried on. We used to have every month meeting to discuss our problems and especially with regard to the affiliation, exams, stipends and we used to find our solutions. Eventually we filed a case in Patna, Bihar for the examination. The next year, Jharkhand was declared as a new state. Then we filed another case in Jharkhand state for the examinations. At that time, the education minister was Mr. Bandhu Tirki and he was quite uh, good to us. He told us that you withdraw the case and then I will conduct the exams. We withdrew the case and the exams were conducted by him. Altogether, 11 batches had written their exams and after that, all the backlogs were cleared. Six batches wrote in 2004, three batches wrote in 2005, and two batches wrote in 2007. Now the other problems we had remained, and that was the stipends. We wrote to the Welfare Department Commissioner, and he granted the permissions for scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and other backward cards and everyone started getting the stipends and that relieved them financially. Father Michael Ether was appointed principal in November 1993 in place of Bernard Darnley. He faced the pressure from different sources for two changes to make the school co-educational and to upgrade the school to class 12. Michael agreed to these changes, backed by the school's managing committee and the governing body, headed by provincial Father Edward approved these changes. From the new session of 1995, Michael also encouraged Christian parents to admit their children in St. Xavier's and also set up a national open school center to enable students to complete high school education. Prisoners in Hazaribagh's central jail also benefited and classes were held in the jail premises. Father Jacob Almeda from February 1988 was Secretary of the Bihar Regional Youth Commission, which meant the supervision of the youth ministry throughout the state. This meant that often he was on the road, organizing rallies and exhibitions enthusing and guiding the youth. In 1989, he accompanied a group of young people from India to a youth congress at the Teise Ecumenical Center in France. In 1995, the Diocese of Dalton Ganj, which embraced the Hazaribagh Jesuit region, was divided and Hazaribagh district was made 
a separate diocese with Bishop Charles Soreng SJ shifted to Hazaribagh as the bishop in November 1997 Father Gabriel Kuchur who at that time was the master of novices received his appointment as the third bishop of Dalton Ganj Bishop Gabriel was consecrated bishop on 8th January 1998